Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod and to the third episode of the Endless Runner tutorial series. I'm Noah. So in the two previous videos, we got our player character moving about the scene, made dangerous obstacles the player must dodge, and also put into place a simple spawning system. Basically, the game is playable and works, but still feels incomplete and a little lifeless. And so today, we'll add juice to this creation with particle effects and screen shake, and also make a repeating background. With that said, let's get started. Oh, and big thanks to Pebble and Wisp for their awesome support on Patreon. Okay, so first of all, let's create a particle effect for when the obstacle comes into contact with the player. Now note that I have a few tutorials on making cool particle effects in Unity, which I definitely recommend you check out. With that said, I'll head over to Create, Particle System, and rename it to Obstacle Effect. I'll begin by changing the look of each individual particle, by changing the material to Sprite Default. Now I can head over to this texture sheet animation module, change the mode to sprite, and I can now choose a sprite inside my Unity project. I'll choose this crisp heart circle, and you'll see that I no longer have square white particles, but round ones. Awesome. You can of course change each particle's appearance to whatever you like, from little spiky circles to weird looping shapes. Now I want this effect to be a sort of explosion, so I'll begin by unchecking loop time since I don't want particles endlessly spawning from the system, but only a burst of them coming out at once. And I'll then change the duration to 0.1 seconds because, again, I don't want particles spawning for 5 seconds. I want them bursting out at once. Heading over to the emission module, I'll click this little plus sign, and now I can choose how many particles I want for each explosion. I can obviously have a fixed number like 30, or each burst can have a random amount of particles between a min and max value, which I think is pretty cool. Also, don't forget to change the shape of your particle system. For a 2D game, I mostly use the circle and edge shape. In this case, I'll use the circle shape, which will get my particles exploding in a circular shape. Once I make sure, of course, to rotate my circle of 180, 80 degrees in the Y axis. Since my obstacles are black, I'll also turn my particle effect to a black color. Notice that you can also randomize colors here as well, which I'll do, giving each particle a black color with a random amount of transparency. I'll also randomize the size and speed of each particle which I also highly recommend to really bring to life your effect and make it feel believable and interesting. Also, play around with how long you want each particle to live before eventually disappearing from the scene view. Lastly, I usually enable the size over lifetime module, making each particle get smaller and smaller the more time wears on. Adding a wee bit of noise can also be cool. And so once you're satisfied with how your obstacle explosion effect looks, turn it into a prefab, delete it from your scene, and then open up the obstacle script we made in the previous video. Here we'll make a public game object variable called effect, and instantiate that just before destroying the obstacle. Before hitting play, I'll select my obstacle prefab, drag and drop our newly made effect inside of that empty effect slot in the inspector, and hit play. And you'll see that things feel a whole lot cooler when the obstacle comes into contact with the player character. As we're at it, I feel like spawning some particles whenever the player moves gives more impact to the controls and game's overall feel. So I'll drag and drop the obstacle effect, call it player effect, and change a couple settings. Perhaps the color, transparency, and the amount of particles spawned in game. And once I'm happy with that, I'll also turn it into a prefab. I'll then hop into the player script and make a public game object variable called effect there as well, instantiating it whenever the player hits the up or down arrow, and that you can indeed go up or down. I'll of course drag and drop that effect in the inspector, Hit play and enjoy looking at my cool new effects. Let's now add some screen shake, which I know many people don't actually like, but I personally feel it makes a game feel so exciting and good. Everything just has more impact with screen shake. Now it will be a waste of time to go on about how to make screen shake in this video when I have a complete tutorial already out there on the topic. Once you've watched that and seen how simple it is to make, I'll simply play my camera shake animation whenever the character moves up or down and whenever he's hit by 
an obstacle. Now be careful not to add too much screen shake or the player will feel dizzy and a little sick. Just a tad is largely enough and best case scenario, have a little toggle option the player can use to enable or disable screen shake. Once you've added that little touch, I'll drag and drop into my scene view this simple background sprite. Now quickly heading into Photoshop, when making your own repeating background sprite, make sure that the left and right parts fit together smoothly. In other words, duplicating this background and moving it here, you'll see that things look seamless. We can hardly tell these are two different sprites. The way you do this is by first drawing a straight line you'll obviously be erasing later on, then make a new layer and make sure that the left and right end parts of your design are both at the same height as that line. Also when making a repeating background, try your best not to make anything stand out against the rest. For example, don't add unexpected spikes or a red tree in between all the green ones. That sort of thing will quickly catch the eye and when the player notices that repeating itself, they'll feel less immersed. With that said, let's get this background repeating itself in game. And the way we do that is very easy. Both backgrounds will move at a certain speed towards the left. And when the background goes off screen, so in my case when it has a position of a minus 35.6 along the X axis, then I'll quickly snap it back to this side of the screen and it will continue moving as if nothing happened. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, let's put it all into place and soon all will be clear. So I'll create a new C Sharp script called Repeating BG and add that to both my background sprites. I'll first of all create a public float variable called speed and then in my update function, like I did for the obstacles, I'll get the background moving toward the left using transform.translate. Awesome. Now I'll make two public flow variables, one called end x, the other start x. When the background's x transform position is smaller or equal to end x, they'll quickly set its x position to start x. And there we go! Now all we need to do is set a value for end x and start x in the inspector for both our backgrounds, and things should be working smoothly. So my background is completely off screen when its x value is minus 35.6, and then I want it to snap back to a position of 35.6 on the x axis. Of course, don't forget to type some value for speed, and there we go! Things work really nicely. I can now duplicate those two background sprites, move those new ones up a little, change their color to something lighter, give them a smaller order in layer so that they render behind the two other background sprites and lower their speed. I'll do that one more time so I have three layers of backgrounds, making the last background speed even smaller. And by pressing play, I now get a cool parallax effect. Because remember that when moving, objects far away seem almost still compared to objects nearby. That's why I've given the further backgrounds a lower speed. And of course, you can do the same for the top of the screen, which I found looks pretty cool. And that's it for this video. Now, I did claim that this series would be made up only three videos, but I realized that four is better. Best, making the tutorial shorter and more enjoyable. As a result, you can expect the final episode of the series in two to three days' time, where we will add sounds to our game, make UI, and add a score system. Once that's done, you can expect a bunch of cool standalone videos covering AI, art, and more before tackling another series. In the meantime, you can support me and my content financially via Patreon, which will be so appreciated and helpful. Hitting the like and subscribe buttons would also be awesome. Okay, see you very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers. <laughs>